Many of us have likely heard of Sharia, and this is probably some of what comes to mind. If so, it's no surprise. In the context of Islamophobia, Sharia inspires a lot of fear, but this fear is rooted in ignorance. In fact, many U.S. lawmakers working to ban Sharia can't even say what it is. So let's look at the actual facts. What we'll see is that the big bad Sharia we hear about is far from the boogeyman it's made out to be. To start with, what is referred to as Sharia law isn't actually a book of law at all. It isn't a single code of rules, but a diverse body of legal interpretations by scholars. Historically, Sharia rulings were meant to be specific to their context, and there was a general respect for different schools of thought. Sharia is stereotyped as patriarchal, but historically, Sharia provided stronger protections for women's rights than European laws did. And what about all the hand chopping and stoning? Historically, criminal punishment was just one tiny part of Sharia and was mostly used to deter crime. For example, in 500 years of the Ottoman Empire, there was only one recorded case of execution for adultery. In 17th and 18th century United States, on the other hand, over 50 people were sentenced to death for sexual crimes. And what about those scary fatwas we hear about? In reality, fatwas aren't death sentences, but non-binding legal opinions by Islamic jurists. They can be about anything, big or small, public or private. For example, giving to charity, or fighting poverty, or ending war, or environmental conservation. Well, that was the past. But what about today? Both Saudi Arabia and Pakistan self-identify as Islamic states. But while Saudi Arabia only permitted women to drive in 2018, Pakistan elected a woman prime minister in 1988. Clearly, Sharia can mean vastly different things in today's world. But what about all of the executions in Saudi Arabia and Iran? While both countries claim to be applying Sharia, their use of the death penalty actually violates the traditional limits imposed by Sharia. Just as the 2,000 people sitting on death row in the United States don't necessarily reflect the spirit of Western law, Iran and Saudi Arabia's executions don't represent Sharia as a whole. To understand law in Muslim countries today, however, we can't just look at historical Sharia, but must also consider the legacy of colonialism. Europeans imposed standard laws across their colonies, and many of these laws survived the official end of colonial rule. The criminalization of same-gender sex in many countries today is one example of this. The single biggest influence on legal and political systems around the formerly colonized world, whether Muslim or not, is this colonial history. All that said, should we be worried about a Sharia takeover today? One of the basic principles of Sharia is to respect the existing laws of the land. So Muslims in Canada practicing Sharia do so by following Canadian law and following religious guidance on personal matters, such as praying, eating, dressing, and giving to charity. So no, Sharia isn't a threat to North American legal or political systems, at least not from Muslims, that is. Ironically, some of the most regressive interpretations of Sharia are being advanced by conservative politicians in order to justify Islamophobic policies. Islamophobia? Now that's something to be scared of.